Uh, everybody, and welcome to the Medivac Podcast. My name is Christian Myers, and I'm one of your hosts today, joined by David Reed. Thank you all for listening. Before we get started, a couple things. We do not do advertisements on this podcast for a reason, because we don't want to inundate you with ads. All we ask... Big that, butt. But Big butt. If you get something out of today, please share it with a friend or family member. If you get one thing out of this episode that you might think someone else will benefit from, let them know. And that is all we ask of you. Our guest today, fantastic guest, I might add. It's great great talking to you. He's got a beautiful beard. Rick Anstrom. Thank you. It is a beautiful beard. Probably because he's a... uh, He's a Navy SEAL. Ah, It's a standard issue beard. Standard issue. And hair gel. (laughs) First thing I did when I retired. (laughs) Grew it all the way out. Yeah. Well, Rick was a Navy SEAL for over 25 years, and now he is a large proponent of psychedelic therapy for uh, dealing with PTS and TBIs. So welcome, Rick. Thank Thanks. you very much for joining us today. Fantastic having you as a guest today. Yeah, First really of all, getting to know you over the last few weeks has been absolutely phenomenal. You are a wealth of knowledge, and that's what we hope to share and showcase on this podcast today. Yeah, well, so. I'll do my best, man. I appreciate you guys having yeah. me. I really yeah, do, so. yeah, yeah, great. Absolutely. So, so let's dive right in and just get a like a, a brief overview of your service. So, like, how did you get started? What what prompted you to want to go in and join and be a part of a team? <laughs> well, that's the funny part. I, uh, you know, I, be, ironically, when I uh, grew up, nobody knew what a Navy SEAL was. You know, this is back in the eighties, and the Charlie Sheen movie wasn't out yet. It wasn't out yet. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, that was a good one, right? But you know, I I grew up doing martial arts, and mm. and I had ninja books, and Rambo came out, and I was like, man, I'm going to be a frigging Green Beret. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to be a yeah. real, I want to be a grown up ninja. Yeah, and I want to be. I mean, yeah. pretty close. Seriously, for, and for you get the, to wear tight black suits, right, in the water. Um. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I think they've switched to gray, but uh, oh, well, <laughs> silly me. Yeah. Silly me. But so anyways, you know, that's what I wanted to do going up, you know, through high school and a buddy of mine who was a couple of years older, he had joined the Navy. Mm. I think I was a junior in high school and he came back. He's like, Hey man, have you ever heard of SEALs? You gotta, you gotta try doing that. And, mm. You know, this was a long time ago. I had to go to the high school library and I, you guys are probably too young to even know what microfiche is. But I remember going <laughs> to the library, putting on a, you know, microfiche yeah. and looking at these articles, these old Vietnam articles. Oh, and yeah. that's really what started it, you know? Awesome. Um, the frog men. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was like the original Frogman too. Yeah, I saw that later, but yeah, it was. I mean, it was just a couple of Vietnam articles, but it was still mm. cool. Anyways, that's that's what prompted me to to go in and, and you know want to do it. It took me a while to to get there, but uh, you know, I, I was actually a, a hospital coroner, a medic in the okay. Navy for a few years before before you know making it through buds. Oh, okay, and I finally graduated in, in 1998, mm. and man, I felt like I was on top of the world. You oh, know, yeah, imagine that to get there and. You know, this is in 98. And then I went to, um, you know, went to jump school, did all the normal SEAL stuff. But then I went off to Fort Bragg for the uh, the Army Special Forces, their 18 Delta medical program. Yeah, okay. Which is phenomenal. It was yeah. freaking amazing. Yes. You know, I would say academically and mentally, you know, it, it's as tough as Bud's is physically and, really? and, and mentally yeah, as well. Yeah, it's very, very wow, difficult. I had no idea it was that intense. Yeah. I mean, I ended up going back and finishing the second half of it a couple of years later. Mm. But, you know, I grew up at SEAL Team 1, did a couple of deployments, um, started out, you know, we were one of the first teams after, you know, September 11th, yeah. you know, uh, early on that next year, ended up going and deploying to Afghanistan. Okay. I mean, you that know. was like perfect timing, right? You, 1998, and then it's like, boom. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people don't understand that. You know, they don't understand... Why, why do you guys want to go to war, do these things? It's like, I don't know. Why do you, if you go to law school, wouldn't you want to see a courtroom? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, that's what you train for. That's what you fight years. for, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, absolutely. so anyways, I was on top of the world, you know, at that time and, and uh, you know, did a, did a, you know, a few combat deployments, did five combat deployments. Okay. Um, you know, I ended up working at the, the Naval Special Warfare headquarters for a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, got involved in more of an intelligence aspect of, you know, what was going on. Some was kind of funny when we were in Afghanistan, you know, we were like, fuck, we're Navy SEALs. We should be kicking in doors all the time. Yeah. yeah. And we did get to, we got to kick in some doors and oh. did some reconnaissance missions, but they weren't coming as fast as we thought they would. Yeah. yeah. And come to find out it's because SEAL teams didn't have its own organic intelligence collection capability. So, you know, all the other units were given, rightfully so, given their units the the good targets. Yeah. yeah. And you guys um, giving them nothing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was the importance of you going into intelligence, right? Yeah, it really was. And then working, you know, at Warcom when we started, you know, developing, and I was really just an admin guy at that time. You know, I was, I was applying, you know, 
working on all my prereqs for PA school, okay. wanting to think about going to PA school, and mm. I ended up getting accepted to Army PA school. Yeah, um, but not Navy. And at the time, I was you know I was really intrigued by the the intelligence stuff, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and so I you know decided to kind of you know jump on board with that and spent the last half of my career um, deploying in that capacity, supporting SEAL teams and you know, cool. National Mission Force and some other folks. So when you say um, intelligence, what is the primary objective that you're you're doing that? Like human or um, SIGINT kind well, of SEALs stuff? SEALs don't or? do human, yeah. but uh, the, you know, we do lead small teams of people that do human, that okay. do signals intelligence, you okay. know, um, analytics and kind of, you know, it's a, it's a small team of folks that have unbelievable capabilities mm. to to find the doors for people to kick in. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, this is a great way of saying it. Find yeah. the doors for people to kick in. I like yeah. that. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I, you know, I still did combat deployments um, doing that. And really what happened was I would say the loss of, you know, I, I mean, I've had stuff happen in combat, you know, there's um, been around plenty of explos- explosions and, and just the nature of being a seal, you know, we use a lot of demolitions, you know, yeah. and, yeah. You know, I, the the VA has considered SEALs um, receiving traumatic brain injury as a presumptive condition now, just be, because of the workups, you know, the the training that we do, you know, breaching and all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, all day, and, every day. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it's a lot of it. And that what they found out is, I think around 2017, they started doing autopsies on a few SEALs and they did these microscopic examinations and found out that they actually have... Um, God, I think it's called astroglial scarring that doesn't discriminate in any region of the brain. Really? You know? And so it's not like a football player getting the concussed. CTE, yeah. The CTE, it doesn't discriminate. So you're, you know, repetitively deteriorating, you know, aspects of your brain, um, which, you know, memory issues, balance issues, yeah. Yeah. you know, executive functioning, all these things that, um, that really can start taking its toll on you, you know? Dramatically, I imagine. You know? Yeah. yeah. You After- know, and then couple that with a, decade plus of war, you know, yeah, the mental fatigue that you're feeling on top yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then a big part of it for me, I think, you know, what, what I, you know, when, when most people that I talk to is just the loss of life of friends. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and now how did that kind of affect you, you know, being in the intelligence aspect of things like, you know, your job is to recon the doors to get kicked in. Yep. And if you're putting your guys out there, how does that make you feel if like, you know, you feel these guys are getting injured. You feel responsible. Yeah. Um, you, I, I wouldn't say that, you mm-hmm. know I mean? The, yeah. You know, we do the best we can to provide the intelligence. And um, luckily I didn't have a lot of, you know, I, I don't know directly of any of the intelligence our team. Because your intelligence was so good. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so good. Yeah, we'll say, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of really smart people. Yeah. You know, um, you know and, and SEALs leading them sometimes can be, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it, we can get in our own way sometimes, you know. I can and, imagine. You know, yeah. lost 17 friends, five by suicide. I think that impacted mm. me and probably yeah. impacts folks a lot more than yeah. um, than a lot of other stuff, you know. And so it was about the five years, um, God, probably around 2012, 13, I started realizing, I was like, man, I remember commenting to somebody, I was like, I feel like a shell of a man right now and I don't know what it is, Yeah, you know. And so I, you know. Hard and this, this was while you were in service? Yeah, this is while I was in. So, so about how many years? Um, God, I was probably in about 15, 16, 18 years by then. Okay. You know, yeah. and so I, I just, I knew fatigue. something was different. Yeah. You know, and so I started, you know, I, I got put on hormone replacement therapy even before they even knew it had any tie into traumatic, yeah. traumatic brain injury. It wasn't even a thought then. Yeah. You know, it was just like, oh, your hormones are screwed up here. You need to be on thyroid medication, testosterone, you're young. And I was like, okay, and, you know, that helped. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then towards the end of my career, when I was, you know, getting ready to retire, I was doing all my VA appointments and, um, you know, I put in for a traumatic brain injury because I'd heard, okay, that can affect you. And I was doing balance therapy and my eyes would bounce when I would, you know, when I would walk, you know, it it was kind of weird, you know, and uh, just memory issues and all sorts of stuff. And it wasn't until I had a VA um, appointment with, you know, for traumatic brain injury Mm -hmm. that the the doctor was like, "Why, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you putting in for PTSD? I was like, I don't know. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so that, shrug it off. That yeah. brings, we don't get PTSD. Yeah. So that brings a good question: is how does that topic, how is it approached in the Navy SEAL community? I mean, do you guys not talk about it? Well, I've been out for two years now, and so I'm, I'm hoping. I know they've started doing some stuff, some baseline testing for yeah. traumatic brain injury. You know, and and we got guys wearing sensors. At least they were. You know, right towards you know when I was about to retire. Um, so I'm hoping they're a lot more aware of it. And you know the the 
the interesting thing about traumatic brain injury and PTSD is there's so many overlap of symptoms. Yep. There's like two or three on each side that only happen for PTSD and a couple on the other side that only happen for TBI. But everything so, else is, yeah, that big concentric circle just overlapping. Yep. Hard to identify which is the real problem. Yeah. And so once I came to that realization, it's like, okay, maybe there's more to this, you know? And I mean, I was on, you know, all sorts of meds, you know, antidepressants and mm -hmm. stimulants and, um, I started looking for other stuff, other ways that, you know, I'm like, okay, first and foremost, you know, my family is unfriggin' believable. They are the biggest support network. Mm -hmm. And if I forget to talk about how important that is, the support side of it on, on the back end, when we start discussing psychedelics, remind me. Okay. But, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I started looking at it and I'm like, okay, the behaviors, the anger, the, um, just the lack of mental flexibility that mm -hmm. I had towards the end of my career, you know, I really needed to look at it. I'm like, I I don't want this to transfer to my family. Yeah. You know, this is generational impact that mm -hmm. I am in, you know, in, that I'm doing for my daughter. Yeah. She's grown up with these behaviors and she didn't deserve it. She's an awesome kid. Yeah. You know, and um, so then I started, you know, I looked at like uh, magnetic brain stimulation. Yeah, I heard of that. Transcranial you know, magnetic stimulation. Yeah, and this yeah. one was called MERT at the time. I think it was um, uh, magnetic EEG, EKG okay. resonance therapy. It's yes. now called wave neuro, but mm -hmm. it's, it's individualized protocol. And that helped. You know, it did. Did you um, do the 30 days uh, I, or the 15 days cycle? I did 30 days. Okay. Uh, well, I was part of a study. I did 30 days mm -hmm. where I was double blind. Okay. I was confident I got the treatment though, because after two weeks, you know, I, I started seeing some pretty good results. That's good. You know, and then they gave us two weeks after that. Um, and it helped out, you know, but after mm -hmm. a few months, I started seeing, you know, some of those old things kind of regress and yeah. you'll see some similar parallels with the psychedelics. Mm -hmm. So so let me ask you this for, for our listeners out there too, is what are kind of the things that are going through your head that make you feel like a shell of a man? What is it irritability? I mean, what what are you doing that you recognize there's an issue to? Um, you know, just irrational behavior. Mm -hmm. I think the, the behavioral part was the stuff that I wasn't looking at. You know, it was all the physical symptoms and yep. stuff I was, yeah. I was looking at. Yeah. And then when I started looking at my own lack of, you know, in traffic, just having to be in front of the guy that's right in front of me, no matter what. Yeah. Screaming at Traffic him, is yeah. the number one issue for yep. me. For BTS, I feel absolutely yeah. same for me. Yeah, I feel trapped and angry all the time when yeah. I was in traffic. Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing, just the, the anger, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, little things that add up yeah. all day long and just keep with you and stick with you all day. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, it got pretty bad. Yeah. And, it, you know, I, again, tried a bunch of other stuff. I was on all these meds and... Through you know, there's an organization called Vets, and they are yeah. freaking amazing. Yes. And you've heard of Vets? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Amber, They've veterans. done some work with um, them. Yeah, Veterans yeah. Exploring Treatment Solutions. Yeah, and they are really good. They've nonprofit. saved my life. You know, they've mm -hmm. saved my family's life. You know, the they've saved my family by providing what they do. It's and amazing. you know, I I ended up uh, you know looking into it, started researching it, and I was like, screw it, man. What do I got to lose? Yeah. You know, I mean, the the research seems to be there. You know. Um, and it's only progressed since then. So yeah. I ended up going down to Mexico and, you know, doing, uh, Ibogaine, which yeah. is <laughs> for <laughs> being hit with a baseball bat for about 12 hours repeatedly. <laughs> Pretty um, intense. But, it, but it's really good, you yeah. know, and specifically it, it has some, some great, you know, some great results for, um, you know, addiction mm -hmm. for specifically like heroin or opiates. Yes. Yeah. But, um, one of the things that they, they found out, they were treating a Marine for uh, opiate addiction, got probably three or four years ago, okay. five years ago. And he came back from it and he's like, yeah, this is awesome. Um, but I also don't have PTSD anymore. All my symptoms are gone. And so that's what I think where they really started. In one treatment. In one treatment. In one treatment. Yep. One 12 hour session. Yeah, one 12 hour Imagine session. That. But they also, I'm pretty sure they still did the, the five MEO yes. DMT, which is yeah. kind of like the. Uh, um, it's a lot shorter acting, yep. um, a lot, you know, different characteristics with it. The thing but, that I've heard about the two used in conjunction is the Ibogaine, you do that first and that kind of tills up your mind. It, it brings up all the nasty shit. And then the five MEO, they do that afterwards to wipe it away and help repave those neural pathways that are previously broken. Body yeah. and mind, right? Yeah. Body and mind. I kind of looked at it like it's almost like dropping a J dam on your house. Yeah. You know? and, <laughs> and then bulldozing over. Yeah. And building then the new. five MEO is kind of like rebuilding that foundation. Yeah. You yeah. Know, but you got to rebuild the house yourself. Yeah. And that's a kind of a big, a big part of it. Takes know? commitment still and responsibility. So walk us through that process. What it is, what you're doing when you're going down and doing this treatment. Um, well, my friend, so I, I've done Ibogaine twice and I'll, I'll explain to you why. And there's a reason, there, there's a reason for it. Initially, in, you know, early on, you know, I got screened for it, did medical screening. Mm 
um, talked to a psychologist a few times, um, you know, and then went down to, to Mexico. Hmm. And there wasn't really talk of what's called integration, you know, yes. and I'll talk about preparation and integration here in a little bit too, because it's, it's really 90% of the success of mm -hmm. these medicines. Um, so when I went down there, you know, I flew down to, to San Diego, met up with everybody, drove down to, um, it was near Ensenada at the time. I think they've moved since, but, uh, you know, we, we you do your analysis and they hook you up to monitors and uh, IV ports and, you know, chat, you know, uh, 12, 12 lead EKGs, um, yeah. just because the ibogaine itself, it can, you know, there can be some medical um, risks. Sure. You know, yeah. It's pretty hardcore medicine. Yeah. Um, so they're monitoring you the entire time, you know, and you uh, had the experience. I don't, one of the things I don't want to necessarily talk about is my exact experience. Because yeah, I, sure. And just, that's it, personal. Yeah. Right, and, and it's also, there's a reason for it though. There's all, if you, if you plant seeds of people um, in people's heads about your experience, then it starts to build expectations. Yeah, that's expectation. Yeah. Interesting. And that's a, that's that kind sense. of a big thing. But uh, long story short, though, is it was nothing short of I think miraculous at the time. You know, mm -hmm. when I did the five meo experience, you know, it uh, that was uh, you know I, I don't want to talk about religion. I know we don't do that, but you know, uh, it, I went from being an atheist, a lifelong atheist, to you'll never tell me anything other than what I believe that I saw was a hundred percent real, uh, and we'll, yeah. we'll leave it at that. You know, and that yeah. just the ability to be able to come home and look at my daughter and go, everything's okay. You yeah, know, that what, that that carries lifelong benefits. Yeah, you know, and that's also one of the the caveats I talk to people about with the medicine. You know, you you have all these neurological benefits, and you know the the brain plasticity and the PTSD and all this other stuff. Mm. Um, but the mystical experience is that one caveat. And there's criteria with what's called the mystical experience. Mm -hmm. You know, and and a, and a lot of it, it can have lifelong benefits, and that's what they're seeing is that's the one little caveat to the regression of some of these medicines that, that I understand. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I get back from that experience and I was on, again, on top of the world. I can imagine, yeah. And feeling it, how long were these back at center? These treatments lasting? Um, it was over a weekend. So I you know, showed up on a Friday. They do the Ibogaine on a Friday night okay. um, throughout the entire night. And then you're literally, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of comical afterwards because you got a bunch of meat eater dudes that are laying in bed for hours. They get up, walk to the kitchen, grab a couple bites of fruit, you know, and then go and kind of go lay back in the bed. It takes it out of you. Yeah, you know? I can so imagine. you need that entire day of recovery. Um, it's pretty intense on the brain. Yeah, I mean, you're spending 12 hours deep in a psychedelic trip. That's got to have some significant recovery time physically yeah. and mentally. <laughs> You know, so that's where that, that 5-MEO is that kind of that rebuilding process. Yeah. You know, and then um, head back to San Diego and I flew back to Texas, you know, that Monday. Um, you know, and, I, and for a few months afterwards, it was unbelievable. You know, mm. it really was. I mean, I was on top of the world. But then I started seeing a little bit of regression, you mm. know, and I was like, hmm, what's, what's going on with this? Um, started doing a lot more research and found out that there's a little tricky thing called integration that's yep. overlooked because everyone feels so amazing after these experiences that they're like, ah, who needs integration? I feel great. I'm going to flush yeah. this the rest yeah. of my life. That 90 days after is really important, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And, you know, I don't like to talk about absolutes because there's so many variables in this. Sure. There's so many, you know, different levels of trauma, you know, baseline resiliency that people have yeah. or yeah. don't have, you know, um, and how it affects them. So there's a lot of caveats, but, and there's also, you know, so what ended up happening is I, you know, saw some regression and I went, okay, I didn't understand integration. And I remember going back down to Mexico and going, Hey, what's this integration thing? And I only did the Ibogaine this time. Okay. You know, I didn't do five MEO. I got everything I needed. I mean, I, I think what I explained to you guys is yeah. probably, I don't even search for a whole lot more with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the integration part of it, man, I was a friggin, I hate to say this, but a Nazi about integration. I mean, yeah. it was my four non-negotiables that I have and still have, um, to this day is, is really what is, I, th I think I have the tools. I think the medicine shows you the path, mm. but it doesn't walk the path for you. Yeah. And that's the, the weird part about it is, you know, uh, a lot of people as daunting as doing stuff like, you know, meditation or breath work or mm -hmm. gratitude journaling. We can talk about the efficacy of that as well yeah. as it's really there. You know, it's, it's, uh, doesn't have to be all this hippie shit, you know, or looked at like hippie shit. I yeah. mean, up. It's, Just to put it in perspective. It's effective shit. And, yeah. It's effective and, and shit. And that's a great thing to realize too, is it's not hippie shit. You're taking care of yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, Balboa Naval Hospital in San Diego, mm -hmm. when I retired, they had a mindfulness, I think it's mindfulness center or mindfulness and meditation center. Yeah. 
And, you know, people look at military medicine as kind of archaic. Yeah. You know, if they implemented that in a Navy hospital, then I don't know, it may be worth a look. Yeah, absolutely. You know, There's but, something uh, to it, obviously. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, the four non-negotiables that I wake up to you know, is, is I, I do start out, I do gratitude journaling, you know, okay. and there's, there's a Stanford neuroscientist that talks a lot about it, the, you know, coupling meditation with gratitude journaling. It's, I mean, it's, um, I be every toasin, like oxytocin, you know, serotonin, um, uh, dopamine, all these different things that when you do those things in conjunction, it kind of shifts your, your perspective, hmm. you know, and he makes you a little less cynical, and a lot more present for people. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you, when you can learn to actually meditate and focus on your breath. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how, how often do any of us take time for ourselves to just really get in tune with our bodies and our minds? Yeah. You know, and if you, I think if, if obviously your own, you know, help and your own personal well being is important, but if you have a purpose in somebody else, maybe that, that you want to do this for, in mm -hmm. my case, I had my daughter Gabrielle and my wife Tisha, you know, yeah. I wanted to be a better person for them. For them. You yeah. Know? And, uh, I think it, I think it translates, you know. Yeah. That required you take ownership of your problems and work on it for them. Yeah. It's not, not something someone else can do for you. Exactly. Yeah. So every morning, gratitude journaling. Yep. What is that? Well, it's, uh, you know, I've got this the little gratitude prompts. I think it's by intelligent change, but it's just a little bit. And I have horrible handwriting, so I use my... I'm my, right there with you, brother. <laughs> so I use the, note, the notes app on my iPhone, okay. you know, and I just use the voice texting. But I've got these little prompts, and it's like four different sections. You know, one of it is, you know, tell us about an old relationship that you're grateful for and why. Okay. You know, it makes you just kind of think and put things yeah. in perspective. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, tell us about the employees at the restaurants you you know, that you frequent and hmm. something you may be grateful for, for them, you know, and kind of shifting your perspective of literally showing gratitude. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, just kind of, again, it's, it's a perspective shift, yeah. you know, and then going into, and I, and I test these things like with my whoop wearable, you know, I, four days straight, I was in the yellow. I went out and did my gratitude journaling, my meditation, recalculated my sleep, boom, 76, 78, 80%. Right, right in the, the green. green. Yeah. You know, so the, these tools help, you know, and they're, they're legit and they're hmm. verifiable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I used to do it in my rocking chair. I had a rocking chair out in the backyard. I got a couple of <laughs> acres in Texas country. But we just went to a ranch a few weeks ago and, and they, you know, 1500 acre or 15,000 acre ranch. And they had these badass hammocks and we would hang out in these hammocks. So now for the last couple of weeks, I, I got hammocks at my house and nice. I go out there and I do my gratitude journaling, you know, and do my meditation. I'm, you know, I've bounced around to different apps. Um, you know, I've used one one called Insight Timer, which just, yep. you know, has a little bell that goes off. It's a really good one. It and is. it's free for anyone who's looking for a, like a free meditation app with yep. guided meditations. It's a really good one. And even in Headspace, though, something yep. I went back to. I started with that a long time ago, but, but Headspace in the first 10 are free with that as well. Yeah. And it's a good baseline. Yeah. The VA also has one that they produced and it's actually, it's surprisingly good. Uh, it's completely free as well. Okay. Um, it's available in the App Store and Google Play. I'll so right on your phone, yeah. You know what it's called? I don't off the top of my head. I will find out, and then we can throw it in the link on here as well. Okay, so awesome. for anyone looking for it, the title will be there. Yeah. You know, and the one big thing about meditation, I've heard a lot of people, ah, I can't, I can't, I'm not good at meditation. You know, I, It takes practice. Yeah. It takes practice, but it also takes an understanding that the whole point of the practice is the practice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the fact that you're going to have thoughts swirling in your head. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have those little bells to go, oh, yeah, I was thinking about other shit. Let yep. me get back to the breath. Bring me back to my breath. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that ability to be present for people, mm -hmm. you know, is the greatest gift you're ever going to give to anybody around you, family members, people you work with, you know. Um, Caleb, did you know? With Black Rifle Coffee's Coffee Club subscription, you can get fresh coffee shipped to you every month. What? You don't even have to go to the store. Whoa. You don't even have to leave your bed. What? Wow. How did you get in here? You might want to go ahead and join the Black Rifle Coffee Club subscription before one of these guys shows up at your place. Absolutely. You're, you're you can, changing your perspective and you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes as well while yeah. you're doing that. And that, that's, I mean, I can't see other things that are less, that are more selfless than that. Right. Yeah. Putting yourself into other people's shoes. Yeah. yeah. Entirely. Absolutely. You know, and, and instead of trying to formulate a response while someone else is talking. You're like, and that, that's what I feel like everybody's doing is just waiting to talk themselves. Yeah. Right. 
And if you could be more present, right? which I think we could all be better at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, meditation helps with that significantly for me. Yeah. But even little stuff like now, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm horrible about answering texts because half the time I leave my phone in my office, you know, and I have yeah. a certain time. But like when I, you know, the, the integration is huge, you know, it's these, two, these resiliency tools, but it's also integrating these things in your daily life. And one of the first things I did, you know, was with my daughter. I used to sit there with my phone and be like, she'd come to want to tell me something. I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, uh, honey, you know, and just start talking like that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be intentional. This is my integration. Yeah. My daughter comes in, I'm on my phone. Set it's it intentional. Down. She sees that yes. and I look at her. You know, and I engage with that. And she just wants, you know, she didn't need all my time, but no. she just wants some of some of my time. And and God dang, man, if I if you know, if I can't give that to her, yeah. Yeah. I it's mean it's a huge thing. Yeah, it is a huge it is. thing. It is. So so we got gratitude journaling. What's what's the other things that you think oh. are so essential? Well, I mean, some sort of breath work, you know, meditation mm-hmm. again. Yeah. It's uh okay. I mean it, it literally takes me all of about thirty minutes every morning. Wake up, take care of business. You know, go out back if it, you know if it's raining or whatever. I'll go in the garage. I got a chair in there. Open the door, listen to the rain. But yeah. you know, the gratitude journaling, the meditation. Um, I'll do. I started out doing a thing called Ten of Anything, and it was just because I man, I I used to be in really good shape. Ten of anything. Um, yeah, and that was just something. You know, a lot of military folks. I mean, once you retire or get out, you know that 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 regimen of working out. You know, it, it for me it started to elude me a little bit. So and I was like, away. okay, yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine who told me about it, he's like, hey, just, you know, get up and do 10 of anything. You know, and that yeah. started out 10 push ups, 10 jumping jacks. Now it's either a max set of pull ups or a max set of push ups. You depend okay. on the day. Yeah. You know, or if I'm sore or whatever, I, I'm working out now. But, you know, if I'm sore or something, then I'll do 10 minutes of stretching, usually mm-hmm. carry that out a little longer. So it's just something to start my day positive. Um, the last thing, and it, which is all, you know, it, the last thing I do is a hot to cold shower. I start out, yep. take a hot shower, finish with cold water. A cold you know, blast right at the yeah, end. Yeah. yeah. Just because a lot of people, you know, it's a, a little mental victory in my head because I know most people aren't going to do that shit. I do that. Yeah. I, I've done that for a couple of years now based off recommendation from another SEAL friend of mine. It's like, mm-hmm. just end your shower with a cold blast. Yep. It's going to do one uncomfortable thing for you that day that you probably don't want to do, yep. but you'll do it every single time. You'll get out and you'll feel better. Yeah. That's the little one thing that I don't want to do today that I will do to myself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? And putting yourself in, I mean, a little, I think that's one thing that the SEAL teams really taught me is, is daily discomfort. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of changes your perspective on that discomfort. You know, I mean, people bitch about the weather out here in Texas. I'm like, little girls live here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal, man. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, acknowledge it and move the hell on. Yeah, kids you are know? outside playing right now. You're inside an AC. Like, get over it. <laughs> yeah. My new details in the relative grand scheme of things, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It and is. that, and that uh, from our conversations too, is what you're talking about is... It, you know, with these therapies, you're able to let go of those little things. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. You know, and one of the things why I explain to people with these therapies is it's not like you're all of a sudden, you know, pissing rainbows and shitting glitter. Yeah. 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 You know, it's these big monumental things in life that used to t- be ups and downs for me. Yeah. They kind of became waves. Yeah. You know, they became an occasional spike here and there and get myself back on track. But a less intense frequency, though. Yeah. It's not giant highs and low lows. It's more center, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's a really good way to describe it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so I, I'm kind of curious to the science behind this, you know, and, and why it's becoming such a prevalent thing in therapy and why the military is starting to use this therapy. Yeah, ket- I mean, yeah. I, they are using ketamine. I know ketamine that for therapy. a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's not a classical psychedelic. It's more of a disassociative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it does have those types of, you know, those types of effects. Um, I, I, I mean... The reason why it's being used is the research is there. I mean, it works. There are, again, caveats to that. Mm. But, you know, the, the science behind it, it you know, I've, I've got a friend who's a, a PhD level neuroscientist and okay. she was talking. Um, and she talks about a, after a high dose psychedelic experience, you have about a 30 to 90 day window of what's called adva- advanced brain plasticity or yeah. neuroplasticity. Mm-hmm. And so what that means is for about 90 days afterwards, you know, you have all these habits, all these beliefs, thought patterns, all these different things that are going on. And, you know, those are ingrained in your, your neural networks, right? Yeah. It's kind of like getting a fresh coat of snow that you got about 30 to 90 days before that snow starts to melt where you get to create your own new ski slopes. Mm, yeah. You know, you can change your habits, you can change your thought patterns, you can intentionally go about things and really make a big difference because... 
what we've, what I've seen, and I've been around about 150 folks, you know, a lot of military um, folks that, that go through these treatments. And mm-hmm. there's usually like follow on signal chat groups. Yes. And I started seeing these, these regressions, you know, after four or five months are like, Hey man, I'm starting to get pissed off again. Anybody know why? It's like, How's your integration going? They're like, yes. oh yeah. shit, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I haven't and really been doing that's it. the caveat is that it requires ownership afterwards. It does. If you if you plan to do one of these these ceremonies and you you're making that intention that intentive step to go down to Mexico and put yourself through this, don't be lazy afterwards. You have to take ownership for yourself because, like you said, that neuroplasticity is going to create the habits that that you maintain over the next yeah. couple of years. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. it requires yeah. ownership. Yeah, it absolutely. does. And that's the hard part with some yeah. folks is because they feel so amazing after these experiences. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, nothing's ever going to change. But it'd be, I mean, yeah. you just got to pound it. You got to maintain and, that. And there's, there's a, a wide variety of integrations as well. I mean, I think last time we spoke, you were talking about no drinking for a certain amount of time, correct? Yeah. And it, again, it's, I mean, it's, it's not stupid to, to say for 90 days if, you know, I mean, it, it's not a bad idea to not drink or to not have certain types of toxic intake. Yes. You know, that could be the news. That could be, you know, social media, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. It's not like you have to, to do it. But if it's not serving you, then it's worth the, the time period to kind of reset your 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 baseline, yeah. so to speak. You know, because yeah. if you introduce those things too early, well, you're reinforcing whatever you're, what, during that 90 days, whatever you do, you're reinforcing. Exactly. So, yes. You know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, change doesn't happen overnight. Yep. And, so you gotta and, you gotta work on it. Right? <laughs> yeah, nothing changes if nothing changes. Yes, you, know? you can't point. just expect yeah. you know to take a magic pill or a magic ceremony and be fine. Yep. You got to integrate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's that's important to recognize is you got to be able to be willing to change. Yeah, and that's a hard part too. You know, I mean, when I started the Shop Foundation, uh, God, probably about six months ago. You, you know, tell us a, what that is. Absolutely. So it's a. I told myself I would never ever market the seal name ever. Yeah. I said I'm gonna, you know, I'll, I'll put forth the work ethic and everything I learned <laughs> with that, and this changed my life so much, and I've seen it change so many people's lives positively that I was like, I hey, fuck it. So it's a. It's the Shop Foundation it stands for Seals Healing Our Protectors, yeah. and the reason why the protectors is it's you know it's veterans, first responders, and their affected family members. Mm-hmm. You know where I live in Dripping Springs, Texas. You know I've got a lot of you know, we're supporting the, you know, um, one of my buddies who owns a brewery out there, um, Twelve Fox Beer Co. Yeah, which Shout I out. can't drink for ninety days. <laughs> exactly. But no, shout out to Twelve Fox Beer Co. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, but we, you know we've got these communities out there of people, and, and it's vet owned, and yeah. you know it's a real, it's a pretty pretty cool place. And, you know, the Hudson's the play. The T-shirt I'm wearing is a music venue okay. that uh, is also a music school where my daughter takes lessons. Oh, and, uh, great. That's awesome. And, I mean, I've tried finding a place in the in the country. If somebody can find one, let me know. That actually has a music school attached to a freaking honky-tonk bar. That's <laughs> oh, awesome. That'd be great. Um, you know, but people don't even realize there's a music school there. But the cool thing is they allow people to, uh, you know, adults and kids. And when they feel they're ready, mm. they get to get up there in front of live audiences at this honky tonk. And my daughter's, you know, been performing there. It's been pretty cool. Oh, that's, that's a really great. cool opportunity for them. But so I've met a lot Feels of confidence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? yeah. And a lot of, you know, most of my friends, they know about my experience. And, and you know, I met a lot of cops and I used to be a paramedic and, mm. you know, a lot of firefighter friends. And they're like, dude, how can I get this? You know, you get on board with this. Yeah. Um, well, you know, vets is all, they're awesome, but they mainly handle special operations folks. Mm-hmm. I know they're going to branch yeah. off into other veterans. Yes. Um, and, you know, their families. And so I was like, well, I mean, I, I guess I could start a foundation and, and help everyone <laughs> yeah, else. And hopefully get and you know, my other buddies. And try to folks. showcase the impact that this is making. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really why, you know, we added, added the, the first responders as well to that. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great asset and a great pillar program in incorporating them. I mean, they're just as valuable as military members. I mean, putting their lives on the lines in our country with the yeah. inability to turn that light switch off like yeah. we do in the military oh, you yeah. know they're they're operating day to day in our country i think that that's uh, yeah something happens to me or at the end of my deployments we get these you know three four day trips to germany to re get back into society yep. and, yeah you know they're yeah and then see, you come home and you go to disneyland and that's it you know <laughs> <what I mean? laughs> you know whereas cops man the shit they see on a daily basis yeah they gotta go home to their families yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, and there's really no fixing. decompression time. There's no nothing. It's yeah. back to your family and then back to work the next day. Yeah. Nothing but props and yeah. respect for those guys. You yeah, know, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, so lead us through, like, what do these typical ceremon- ceremonies look like? Um, you know, there's, I mean, again, there's, there's, there's dozens of mm-hmm. different yeah. places you can do it. Um, and different know. ways to apply it, different 
integrations. There just seems to be, you know, everybody's trying to piece this together now. Yeah. I mean, so I'll give you an example. One of the, you know, kind of contraindications for people doing the classical psychedelics like psilocybin or mm -hmm. 5-MeO or ayahuasca mm -hmm. is... You, you you can't really be on like SSRIs, yes, you know, yeah. certain ones because of the bonding, the, the medicine just won't bond with it, yeah. you know. Um, and so you'll you'll take it, and it's like you won't have any effect, or you have a real loss of effect. So where ketamine's been really valuable in that is, is since it's not a classical psychedelic, you know, people who are on SSRIs they can start doing ketamine therapy to dramatically decrease the amount of time that it takes to wean off of these things. Mm. You know, and it does have great, you know, great effect with like PTS and, and uh, you know, different mental health stuff as well. So ketamine's a great, a great option. I know with the ketamine, they typically incorporate talk therapy into that as well. Uh, vice, like the uh, ibogaine and 5-MeO ceremonies, those are more psychedelic forward, whereas yep. the, the ketamine, they pair it. I know the VA is doing that at least with their ketamine clinics. They sit you down with a, a psychiatrist and you do a full talk therapy session during your ketamine trip. Yep. And that's what I've seen that seen it both ways. It yeah. kind of depends, you know, they usually, it, what I've seen is they do that talk therapy initially mm -hmm. and then they kind of like, Hey, if you feel comfortable then then you may not need it, Yeah, you know, and then, um, after a few sessions. So, mm -hmm. you know, and with ketamine, it, it depends on, on, you know, your particular situation, but yeah. it can be, you know, multiple set, you know, sessions, okay. yeah. you know, yeah. you know, and then there's other, you, all sorts of different types of ceremonial stuff. And which really kind of brings me, it'll, I, I, I want to talk a little, a little bit about the, the military and first responder type of cultures, you know, a lot of these ceremonies and understandably so, because it's the, the it's the cultures that they come from, mm -hmm. you know, it's the IOI, I joke about, you know, it's the ayahuasca circle, the people that are already vegans, the people yep. that already meditate, yeah. the people that already do these things that have these, you know, that you typically lead these ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And the, the military and first responder is as different as they are e even individually. Mm -hmm. There's still kind of a different culture, yeah. you know, with, yeah. with military. And so um, one of the things that, that I saw, again, with about 150 people in signal chats and, and some of the integration that was, was being recommended, you know, with conscious eating and becoming potentially a vegan sure. or, you know, doing transcendental meditation or kundalini yoga or... You know, some of these other things that it, it's, again, it's, it might be a little bit of a far reach for a lot, you know, a lot of the, the yeah. folks in this culture. Yeah, because you can't um, expect them to change their entire lifestyle, right? right. And, right. you yeah. know, so it's got to be integrated in tune with their mentality, right? Yeah. I think it has to do with ego too, as well. Looking at those things, like that's not for me. Like I'm, I'm too good for that kind of. Yeah, you're right. Kind of mentality. I, you know, this is, again, this is my own um research, but mm -hmm. it seems like about 10%, about 10% of the, the military and, and first responder folks, they will go hog wild. They're like, dude, I'm going to be a, the next yogi. I'm going <laughs> yeah. to yeah. be that vegan. Yeah. I'm going to be that person doing all these things. But there's still another 90%. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's like, how do we bridge that gap and make culturally relative things that don't have to be, you know, a negative Exactly. You know, I mean, people hit the gym or breath work or kind of fra changing some of the phraseology of some of these things that really do work, but may, may trigger people to be like, fuck that, I'm not doing that. Yeah, exactly. and that's the thing is how do you break that stigma of this is not hippy dippy, you know, this is taking care of yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it is hippy dippy. Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and there, there's something funny. I, I can't tell you how many fucking times, how many times, excuse my language, no, you're fine. but how many times I've sat in ceremonies with guys at the end of it, big meat eaters, dudes, yeah. you know, all yeah. tattooed up. Sitting there going, fuck, man, the hippies were right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a common thing. So. Yeah, it yeah, is, it is kind of true. I, the way I get, I get this question a lot more often now because I'm pretty open about my use of meditation and, and dabbling in, in these different uh, areas. Uh, I, I relate it to the gym. A lot of my friends, they go to the gym, they're meatheads, they work out all day long. Like You take care of yourself in this aspect, but you're completely neglecting yeah. what's, what's driving you you have these issues and you're refusing to face them and you're refusing to take the steps that are appropriate. This is how you do it. It's not going to be a magic pill. You're not, you're not just going to wake up one day. You have to make the intent and you have to take the steps yourself, take ownership for yourself. Yeah. And it's a way to work on yourself. It's just like going to the gym. It's going to take practice. You're not going to show up and lift, you know, do a 500 pound deadlift day one. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to do it. No True. one's going to be able to meditate for an hour straight day one. 
you're going to get two minutes at best. Well, and that's of, one of the things, you know, it was some of the public speaking things I, I talk about with people is, is how do they do this type of thing? Hmm. And it's, it's really about building new habits. You know, yes. you don't have to, I mean, you know, a, a, a good friend of mine who's really, you know, really smart on all this stuff. She was talking about, uh, you know, if, if you want to work out, just throw your workout shoes by your bed and put them on every morning. Yeah. You don't have to work out. You know, but eventually it's probably going to motivate you to do it. Yeah. You know, or meditation. Just go sit in a friggin' chair for a minute, take a couple deep breaths, and start to build that habit. Yep. You know, and a lot of people. I it's mean, repetition, I, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just repetition, doing something over and over again to not not think of it as like, oh man, I, you know, I'm I need to do this. It's I have to do this. You yeah. know, every day. Don't don't make it an option for yourself. That's, yeah. That's what I do. I don't I don't leave myself an option. Like the, the shower thing, yeah. again, like I have a nice hot shower and right at the end, I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to do this. Let me blast cold for a minute. This sucks. <laughs> I get out and I've completed it. Don't, yeah. don't, don't make it an option. When I was using Insight Timer, mm -hmm. you know, my dog would come out there. I would go sit in my chair, do my gratitude journaling, and I would start to meditate. My dog, he would go sit in front of me and just wait. Yeah. And he knew the bells. And he once that gong went off, he's like, oh, all right, come over and talk to dad. He knew yeah. it was non-negotiable. Yeah. You know, but the timing and specificity, there's a timing and precision, but the when and where you do something is hugely important about building a new habit. Mm -hmm. And that's why I developed a morning routine because okay. I just get out of the day, you know, get out of the way um, first thing in the morning. But, you know, the where and when, you know, after you wake up mm -hmm. and where you do something, there's about a 99% chance you won't develop a new habit if you just go, I'll just do it whenever during the day. Sure. Yeah. And you don't define that time and location. Yeah. Um, so how do you break the negative connotations associated with psychedelic drugs. Because, you know, I feel like there is a lot of misinformation out there where, you know, people are like, oh, you do drugs? Well, that's not good. Like, how, what, what do you do when someone says that to you? Um, well, I mean, you know, if, if, if they put psychedelics in the same class as like heroin or cocaine or any of those types of things, yeah. first of all, I'm like, yeah, we're not even talking, you know, in the same ballpark to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, this is he healing people from those those afflictions. Stays in your hair for 10 years and if yeah. you crack your neck, you know, you're good high. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, this has been talked about ad nauseum, but it's it's really kind of our generation, not your guys' generation, but, you know, like like me and your folks, sure. the stigma associated with this and yeah. kind of the, the whole narrative that was put out there yeah. for a long time. The war on drugs. You know, I, you know the, the way the, I the break Reagan the cultural, administration, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was saluted by Ronald Reagan, by the way. That was pretty uh, cool. Well, While he was president. I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, that was one of the coolest moments of my entire That's life. That's kind of cool, yeah. That was a little, that was cool. sitting little president. guy, E2, yeah. got invited oh, really? to the uh, inauguration. Wow. And... Um, and, you know, while they were waiting for Bush to be sworn in, you know, that Reagan was, was driving down Pennsylvania Avenue and there's a little construction area where I was at. And the, so there wasn't anybody near me, but the motorcade had to slow down to about 10 or 15 miles an hour to get around this little barricade. And I saw Reagan back of his head. He's turning right as he starts to turn. He looks towards me and just like, and I was That's, like, it was probably the general right behind there was you. Nobody around <laughs> me. But I was, like, pretty, I was like, hey, did you guys see that? That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it was really cool. That's a cool experience. Uh, especially for you, that is maybe cool. guy. Yeah. Anyways, I digress. But uh, <laughs> the, so one of the things, you know, I, I talk to people about is, is it, if it was that wazoo, places like Johns Hopkins wouldn't open up a $19 million psychedelic and consciousness yeah. research center on their main campus, yes. so, you know, followed by a couple other big and well known institutions. It also put out there that, you know, the FDA for about three years in a row has given psychedelics, certain psychedelics, what's called breakthrough therapy designation. Mm -hmm. And that's the U.S. government. You know, yeah. they're like, and what that means is when they give somebody a breakthrough therapy designation, they're like, okay, the research that we're getting right now is so far and above everything that we currently have. Yeah. You guys are getting head of the line privileges for further research and, and hopefully for legalization. Thank you God. So, yeah, it's about time, yeah. you know? And I mean, it, it does expand the mind and it betters you. You know, every, everything that I read about people experiencing this become a better person because of it. Yeah. It's life altering. Yeah. And how long do these treatments last? Uh, not uh, half a day. Yeah. yeah. And you know, even the, the five MEO is only about 10 minutes. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. I mean, it can be anywhere from 10 minutes to you know, 30, 40 minutes. 30, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, it really, I mean, there are, again, there are, there are the caveats. If you just did the, in my opinion, here's the thing. If you just give somebody the medicine without any prep, without any, you know, understanding of what integration is, mm -hmm. um, without looking at the home environment of what people are coming back to, you yes. know, people, in 
just hypothetically, but you know, if you were trying to kick heroin, yeah. and all of a sudden you come home and and your wife or your husband's going, "Oh, that's great! You did a great job, man. Yep. Good job. Yeah. You passed me the rubber band." Yep. You know, then that's probably not the best environment for you to be in. So it's really under, you know important for people to be educated. You know, when they're when they're screened to talk about the the life at home and what mm-hmm. they're going to go back to and stuff like that. Um. So yeah. Have you found couples uh, doing this together? Oh yeah, we've. <laughs> I mean, there's been On a few times, topic? yeah, and I, I have my own beliefs, kind of about that. You know, it's uh, what what we've seen pretty much a hundred, bat a hundred percent, three out of three is when couples want to do it together. There's a, this worry about the other person, how their experience is going, and vice versa. Uh, you know, so um, you're not focused on yourself; you're focused on the other person, exactly, and that's detrimental to the. It, well, again, it's only three people, you know, three couples that I've that I've personally in, been involved with. Okay, you know, I, just, I know other folks do it, and maybe they have better ways of, of you know prepping for those certain retreats. And I'm 100. percent I'm not opposed to it. Sure. But I've just seen with my own experience that it doesn't always fare that well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's such a personal thing to work through your own in, your own traumas and yes. um, and to have that time to really build to just focus on you yeah. and integrate that back in your life. I think is hugely important. You know, yeah, but, scene and setting, right? I mean, that's that's an important set, setting. Yeah. Set, 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 setting. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So that's an important aspect of it too. Is you you want to put yourself in a position where you're not distracted. Yeah, it's kind of like you know going down to taking some LSD and going to Sixth Street in Austin. You know, and going to the clubs. It's yeah. probably not going to be the the best mindset, or the yeah. definitely not the best. Setting. Some heavy metal music while yeah. you're while you're doing this ceremony. Or what? <laughs> yeah, well, I do. Know, I have some I have some friends that uh, did it to some Viking music recently, and they're like, oh. Oh, "I didn't really go as planned." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet it was a little intense. Yeah. And <laughs> now they took over Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but no, set and setting, man, I'm telling you that the mindset going into this, and that's why the preparation is hugely important. Mm. You know, making sure that you almost have to be part of you know, the recovery has to already be happening before yeah. you actually have that experience. Recognition of a problem, especially, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to recognize that you need to better yourself. Yeah. I think that's an important key. Yeah. And that's a big change I've, I've had to make was... You know, a lot of people are like, dude, they, they, he needs this man. Can you get this person here? And it's like, yeah, okay, man, hopefully it'll work out. But a lot of times we've seen that it just doesn't. Mm. You know, it just doesn't. When people go in with a, they're like, yeah, fuck it, man. People told me I need to be here. I'm here. Yeah. You know, that they generally don't have a great, not always, but generally don't have a great experience. The afterwards, the, there's no integration. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's almost like a waste. And, and from a foundation level, you know, it's either, I don't believe in absolutes, you know, there's different people with different levels of trauma and that mm-hmm. needs to absolutely be screened and understood. Yeah. But when people are forced to go there, you know, it's, it's, um, and using, you know, generous donors money. Yes. You know, I think those people need to be, okay, you're probably not, you're not ready. We can do some work and then we'll get you to where we know that you're going to at least attempt and follow through with some of the stuff afterwards. Yeah. I mean, you kind of yeah. owe it to the person who's funding this entire thing because it's, it's not cheap. Yeah, it's not cheap at all. You kind of owe it to them to take those steps in preparation, and then the follow-on after with the integration. Yeah, if if you're not willing to do that, then yeah, I agree. Then the financial incentive should not be there. But it is an expensive thing that they're paying for. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's there's preparation coaching involved. There, you know, the screening. Mm-hmm. There's um, integration coaching afterwards. There's kind of two two flip sides or two sides to integration. There's the mm-hmm. You know, the psycho spiritual or psycho, you know, the, the experience itself, integrating what you learned yes. from these experiences and kind of, you know, um, taking those forward within your life and, and moving with, with what it, the medicine has shown you, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But, you know, then there's also the physiological stuff. It's building those high yield resiliency practices that once that medicine starts to wear off, that you have these practices. Yep. The practices are huge, but then it's also like you were talking about, you know, David, with, with, with traffic. If you can intentionally go, okay. I'm going to be in traffic today. There's not a goddamn thing I can do about yeah. it. Maybe I'm intentionally going to be like, yeah, I'm just going to sit in the slow lane or put a podcast on or, yeah. you know, and just go about my day. Can Acceptance, you, right? Yeah. You know, I can't my, change this. One of yeah. my favorite things that I've ever heard was Tony Robbins. He goes, 90 seconds. Take 90 seconds to be pissed off as much as you want yep. and then move on because it's not doing you or anyone else good yep. if you're sitting there stuck in and your own returns. Anger. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, there's a book I read as a kid. It was called Way of the Peaceful Warrior. So maybe I've kind of been a closet hippie my whole life. But <laughs> but one of the things in there... Yeah, but guy, you're a badass hippie, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. But, um, no, but they said, let it, you know, this guy's gas stations burn, burn down. And, you know, Socrates, the one of the characters, and there's told the, told the guy who lost his gas station, he's like, all right, let it flow, man, and then let it go. You know, and that's kind of what you're saying there, yeah. Tony Robbins. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you, you mentioned to me family. 
to bring that back up. Yep. So how has your you know, relationship gotten better with your daughter, with your family? Well, she is a teenager. She's 15 yes. now. And she's a, she's a 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there are those moments, but yeah. you know, it, it, most of it's on me, you know, it's, uh, um, but, but to answer, to answer your question, it, it hundred percent saved my life, saved my relationship with her. My daughter, you know, she has cried multiple times saying, Hey, I got my daddy back, you know? Oh, wow. And, and that's a lot of makeup made up time. And we did the math the first six years or the first 12 years of her life, I was either deployed or training or gone, you know, yeah. gone for six of those years. Yeah. Um, that's a long time. But um, my wife, man, she is the most unbelievable woman on the face of this planet. So that I, I had nothing but opportunity to succeed just because mm. of my home life. You know, she's, yeah, a, that's good. she's a high school, you know, she was a high school science teacher. Okay. Um, you know, just peers of driven snow. And just, I, I used to tell her, I was like, you're a Zen master and you don't even know what Zen is. <laughs> you know, she's so present for people and comforting. And, yeah. uh, you know, and my daughter's the same way, you know, she follows after. It was weird because I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Before I did any of these treatments, I, I was still, you know, when I was on this path to at least try to, to get better, I was always finding these things and telling my daughter things to do. I was like, yeah. hey, you got to do this. Or you need to do that. Well, what I realized is modeling behaviors is a button, <laughs> is way the hell more important than telling people to do shit. I, I don't remember, a th I remember maybe a few things my mom or dad ever told me. And sure. I, whenever I talk to people, they have a few things I remember, but what they do remember is how they behaved. Mm. You know, and once I started going down this path, you know, with the meditation and after doing the psychedelics and she understands what it is. You know, we've talked to her and we've been honest with her about it. Sure. Um, the first, <laughs> when I first tried telling her or told her about it, she's like, is it kind of like vaping? I was like, <laughs> no, no, CBD. No, 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 not like CBD. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Which, Blowing your mind into space. <laughs> yes. Which, which there, I, I, we had a high, I was supporting, you know, one of the, one of the, the retreats and, <laughs> one of the high profile guys had just come down from a five MEO experience. And that is the grand poo ball of all psychedelics. Yes. It is unbelievable. From the he, Sonoran desert toad. Yeah. Yep. The uh, Bufa Alvarez. Yep. Uh, Sonoran desert yes. toad. Yeah. But um, he had come down and he was talking to the doctor and, and he's like, well, you know, what if, uh, you know, later on some of these, you know, some, if I start getting a little you know, anxious or angry or whatever like that. And the doctor looks at him, he goes, well, you know, if, uh, you know, if you're not opposed to doing, you know, CBD, that can be helpful. And the guy just goes, are you fucking kidding me? After what yeah. I just did, am I yeah. opposed to CBD? Yeah. So, I think I can handle it. Yeah, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> Non-psychoactive. Yeah, I'll be okay. Oh, yeah. my God. So, you know, if, if everyone's not convinced at this point in time, what would you say to people that are on the fence about doing a treatment like this that think, this might be for me? Or well, people who think they can't handle it. Yeah. Because it's scary. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. You know what's weird, though, is, is I, I think about it. I, I joked about this, too. I was, somebody brought this up a couple of days ago. They're like, I remember at one of the retreats, you know, you were talking, and uh, and you, you kind of, to break the ice, you're like, hey, just a reminder, man, high school kids do this shit all the time. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> That's true. Big, yeah. burly badass. You can probably handle it. Just grab your yeah. cojones. Well, and, you know, yeah. the problem is you're a big, burly badass who knows how to kill people, so... <laughs> Does it? What do you do while you're in the ceremony? I mean, you're moving around. No, right? Well, it you know it depends. I mean, it really does. It depends on what's going on. If it's what medicines they're using, how they're hooked up, or whatever. But you know, it, it again the, that a lot of that's in the preparation. A lot yeah. of the teaching people to understand. You know, the coping mechanisms, the breathing. You know, the only thing you can control because a lot of people want to fight it and they're like, oh, I just yeah. want this to be done. It's like, sorry, bro, don't work that way. You got to let go of control. Yeah, yeah. you have to let yeah. go. And, you know, I mean, you were wanting, you know, an aspiring ninja back then. I don't want you, like, karate hacking me in the neck or anything. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking you know? about doing it again now. I'm thinking back into the ninja thing. Oh, dude, you, you go chopping. for it, man. Go for it. Yeah, you'll be the most peaceful ninja known to man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he busted my, my, my chops this morning. He, I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm doing some stretching. And I, can't, I think I was the joking. I said, I'm hydrating. He yeah, called, you he called me a hippie. I was like, all right, I'm going to hit the heavy bag. So, <laughs> yeah, what did I call you? A hippie fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah that's what I'm it like, was. all right, I'm going to go punch something now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to, you know, a, a message to out there to those out there um, about trying a treatment like this. What would you say? Do the research. You yeah. know, I wouldn't read a lot of trip reports just because it can taint yeah. your own experience. Sure. But just do the, the research. Understand the efficacy of it. Most of these things are unbelievable, like psilocybin, you know, and five meo, and those things are mm -hmm. and ketamine. They're unbelievably safe. Yeah. You know, and ibogaine is relatively safe too, but it does have some risks associated with it. Sure. Um, but the, what do you have to lose? 
Yeah. You know, yeah. if the, again, a lot of people I looking at this, I can do hyperbaric oxygen therapy, mm -hmm. not FTA. It's not a breakthrough therapy. I can do, you know, the, the, um, transcranial mega stimulation, yep. sit there in a chair for every day for, you know, six weeks or eight weeks. Still like ganglion blocks. Ganglion like that. blocks, yeah. you know, and, and a lot of these things, people do have good, pretty decent type of, uh, you know, results with it. Mm -hmm. But I will yeah. say this, and, and this is just based on, you know, the research and people I talk to and afterwards, it's like, this has been around for so long and it's so safe and effective. You know, if you don't have any of the contraindications and you can get yourself to just be like, fuck this man, yeah. what do I have to lose? Yeah, yeah. at you know? this point. Yeah. yeah. And that's, a, that's a great point too, is detrimental effects. What do you got? Yep. Do you see any? Do you see any? Um, yes. There's one hugely negative side effect or a side effect of 5-MeO-DMT, okay? After you do that, you will not be able to, uh, you, you'll fucking want to tell everybody on the planet. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only, that's the only real big side effect. Yeah. You know, and some people will look at you like you got lobsters coming out of yours when you're talking to them. So exactly. again, that's why I don't talk about the experiences because if you've never done it, you'll never be able to relate to it ever. Not humanly possible. It's not, it, um, you're not able to, to explain it because it's almost impossible to comprehend yeah, what you see so, and the information that you receive. Yeah. You know, and if you can yeah. help reduce people's cognitive dissonance of, wait, psychedelics are bad. That's yeah. what I grew up on. Well, no, wait, all this, all this research is saying something yeah. otherwise. And all these people that I talk to, you know, that, that, or people that I've met that have done it, and I've seen the positive changes in their life, mm -hmm. you know, then, I, you know, I think you can start to reduce some of the little uh, dissonance that people might have. I think so. You know? Yeah, I mean, that, it stems back to the, the war on drugs and you're going to melt your brain with this acid. And you're going to have flashbacks for the rest of your life. And <laughs> there's nothing like that with the 5-MeO. Well, I mean, there's a couple week period afterwards where you definitely feel more relaxed during meditation. And yeah, you have yeah. that glow. So you have speak. that glow. Yeah. 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 That lasts for a few weeks afterwards, but otherwise, I mean, I've, I haven't noticed anything. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the uh, comedian Bill Hicks? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he's he's awesome, and you know, I, I ironically found him uh, through Tool. I like Tool. Tool's a cool band. But oh, I'm um, right there with you, brother. Yeah. You yeah, know, and there's definitely yeah, it's a lot. My of, favorite band. If they haven't done well, I know they have done this. They've talked about it. You know, mm. um, the drummer gets a lot of his influence for the drumming rhythms and stuff. I think he talks about it on his website. Interesting. Um, but uh, and I don't think oh. ever publicly other you know the, the singer or anything like that come out publicly. Well, talk well about now it. it's public. It's, yeah. out, it's, out, there. <laughs> it's out there. Yeah. Too. Hey. Yeah. I will take some concert tickets <laughs> yeah. when you get a chance. <laughs> have you seen him live? I have not seen him live. Every time I miss him. Yeah, it's amazing. But well, thanks for rubbing it in. Yeah. <laughs> seen him a few times. So. <laughs> Rick, you've been a phenomenal guest on the show. First and foremost, to our audience out there, if you have any questions for Rick, please comment below. Hit the like button. Share this. I want to hear your thoughts. And, you know, I got to close out by saying it's okay to be tough but tender. Yeah. I mean, classic okay. example right here. <laughs> as tough yeah. as you could possibly be and tender at the same time. Not You'll here. break things, but he'll meditate about it. Exactly. <laughs> I can't thank you guys enough, man, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. I hope Absolutely. you guys know that, man. You're awesome dudes. Thank thanks, you. brother. So, yeah, thanks, thanks for being on today. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Medevac Podcast. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day. Yeah.